Thank you, Lord. Praise Continue with this abiding in confidence. Now, it's a subject we all need to possess. Possessing confidence. That's what we need. Be confident. God is with you. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. So you got to build up that confidence. Build that confidence up by His Word. A confidence that says, no matter what happens, I'm able to be more than a conqueror through Him who strengthens me. Amen. Praise God. Now, being confident is having a good working knowledge of God and His wisdom that comes from knowing His Word. It helps us to overcome anything that the enemy of our soul can come against us with. Having a confidence that's unshakable is a weapon we can use when we find ourselves in a place where the enemy comes against us. It's our weapon. Our spiritual strength lies in our ability to know what He, the Lord, has done. You know, we talked earlier in our uh, Sunday school about all the precious promises that He has for us. The more knowledge and wisdom we as His body acquire, the better we are to handle situations when the enemy comes. Amen. Knowing what to pray and how to pray is vital for us when the enemy comes. Now, knowing his word is the only spiritual weapon we have. The sword of the spirit. His word. The body of Christ needs to know what and how to pray. Our enemy now wants a Christian that doesn't pray or read or meditate on his word. That's what the enemy wants. Because he knows he can defeat them. Because they're weak in their spirit. Now, the closer we get to God, the more enemy, the more the enemy will come against us. That's just the way he is. Because he doesn't want you to accept Christ. So he's going to do everything he can to draw you away. But knowledge of our spiritual rights as followers of Christ brings about an ability for us to draw closer to him. Look at the scripture with me. Go to James. Look at James. And we're going to look at James 4. James 4 8. Everybody got it? 4 8. We're only going to read the first part of it. It says, Draw near to God. And he will draw near to you. Now, I don't know how much nearer you need God. God's already, the Holy Spirit is already in you. Yes. Now he can encompass you even more if you draw near to God. How are you going to draw near to God? You be his word. The confidence that we have in his word 
is where we can come against the enemy. Knowing who we are in Christ enables us to overcome things in life. That's our faith. Faith comes from here. From here is the Lord. Now, we are children of Abraham in that we were grafted in but the faith that we now have comes from the knowledge of his word as believers. Scripture says Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Go with me and you'll look at it in Genesis 15. It's important that you know that what I'm saying is in the Word of God. I'm not going to teach you something, show you something that ain't in the Word of God. And I ain't up here to tell you stories. There's plenty of biblical accounts in the Word of God that I don't have to make up stories. Look at Genesis 15, verse 6. And here it says of Abraham. It says, and he, Abraham, believed in the Lord, and he, the Lord, accounted it to him for righteousness. So here it is in scripture. You can see it all, black and white. What God did. He, Abraham, believed in the Lord, and he, God, accounted it to him as righteousness. Knowing more of his words, Builds up our confidence to believe God for more of what we want and what concerns us. Knowing more of the word builds us up to have confidence to believe in God. Our ability to believe just as Abraham makes us have the same faith as he has. Look with me to Romans 4. We've seen it before. We've read it before. But nonetheless, let's go to it. Romans chapter 4. Romans 4. We're going to start in verse 13. It says... For the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law. Okay? The promise doesn't come through the law. The law is one thing and the promise is another. So I want you to understand that. <clears throat> it's in verse 14 for if those who are of the law are heirs faith is made void and the promise made of no effect so there it clearly says faith is one thing law is another it says now in verse 15 because the law brings about wrath for where there is no law, there is no transgression. Now, I want you to understand that. If there's no law that God has gave, then it can't be wrong to do. All right? But if, law, if God has said it and it became the law, then you can't do it. All right? Because that would be breaking the law. And in verse 15 it says, Therefore it is of faith that it might be according to the grace so that the promise might be sure to all the seed not only to those who are of the law but also of those who are of the faith of Abraham who is the father of us all as it is written and we just read it well no we didn't read that one but we knew this as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. And that's in Genesis 12. In the presence of him 
whom he believed, even God, who gives life to the dead okay. and calls those things which no, no. do not exist as though they did. Yes. Who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken. So shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, and that's one thing that we need to make sure that we're not weak in faith. He did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully convinced, that's what we need to be, fully convinced, nothing can change our mind, that what he had promised, who, who God had promised, right. that he was able to perform, and therefore it was accounted to him as well. He believed God. That's all it took. He was fully convinced that God was going to be able to do it because he couldn't do it. He's 100 years old. Mm -hmm. And the child of promise came forth, I said. Mm -hmm. So that's what we need to have, that confidence in believing and being convinced that there's nothing else greater or better than the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Now, we as believers... Mm -hmm. The confidence that comes from our faith in God and our understanding of the truth of His Word for our wants and needs. We just need to learn what belongs to us and confess it and apply it. That's all it's going to take. Now, Jesus did and spoke what his father wanted him to and what was prophesied about him. That's what he did. His work on earth was to bring people like you and me to a faith in what God has said. That's what it's all about, his word. What God has said. Did God say that? That's one way to look at stuff. Did God say that? Okay, then I'll believe. It. If God said it, I'll believe. It. If He didn't say it, then uh, it's not possible. Now, Jesus entered this human race through a virgin birth and died for all our sins and all of mankind. And He provided to what I believe. The only way. If you don't accept Christ, then you have no way of getting to it. Now, turn with me to Hebrews, the ninth chapter. So now, I want to read this out of the NLT. So for those of y'all that have the NLT, I'm going to be reading it out of the NLT. Hebrews 9, starting verse 24. Okay? This is the NLT. It says, For Christ did not enter a man made sanctuary that was only a copy of the true one. He entered heaven itself now to appear for us in God's presence. Okay. He appeared for us in God's presence. Nor did he enter heaven to offer himself again and again 
the way the high priest entered the most holy place every year with blood that is not his own. You understand that now? You can go back into the Old Testament and read Leviticus and read what the priest had to do every year to sacrifice an animal for people's sins, for the family's sins. But it says in verse 26, then God would, then Christ, I'm sorry, then Christ would have had to suffer many times since the creation of the world. But now he has appeared once for all at the end of the age to draw away, to do away with sin by the sacrifice of himself. Now, because he has done it, it's the end of the age. So, God's going to be coming soon for his people. Christ is going to be told, go and get your people. Because we're at the end of the age. Verse 28, 27 or so. Just as a man is deemed to die once and after that to face judgment. So Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many. And he will appear a second time. Not to bear sins, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. Are we waiting for him? We're, we're a church that's waiting for God to reappear. Praise the Lord. Now, his sacrifice can never be repeated for all sin has been atoned for. Let's read, read about this in Romans. Now go with me to Romans. I'm going to read it again out of NLT. Romans 6. We're going to look at verse 10. Okay, and this is the NLT now. Romans 6, 10. Everybody have it? Yes. All right. It says, The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves. It's talking about us. Count yourselves. Dead to sin, but alive in to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, so that you obey the evil desires. Do not offer the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness, but rather offer yourself to God as those who have been brought, bought from death to life and offer the parts of your body to Him as instruments of righteousness. For sin shall not be your master. Because you are not under the law, but under grace. Praise God. If Jesus sacrificed his self, he sacrificed for all of us. For everyone that would believe in him, he died for your sin and for my sin. Now that we have the same faith as Abraham, and sin has been atoned for. Sin doesn't have a place in, in us unless we place ourselves in it. Wow. We as followers can do what Jesus did. Wait to hear what our Heavenly Father wants. Be just like Jesus. Pleasing the Father is what we should do because He knows 
the desires of our heart. Look at with me that scripture in Psalms. Psalms 37. Psalms 37. And look at verse 4. It says, delight yourself also in the Lord, and He shall give you the desires of your heart. Wow. That's a promise. Delight yourself in the Lord. How do you do that? Be in the Word all the time. Reading the Word, quoting the Word, confessing the Word. That's how you delight yourself in the Lord. To know that He'll bring happiness to you because he's going to give you the desires of your heart. Now, our level of confidence rises because of our dependence on his word in our life. The word needs to be what we go to all the time and not only when we need it. We need to go to his word all the time. And don't go to it just because you need it. Well, yeah, it's good to go to it, but that's the only time you go to it is when you need it? Or do you go to it all the time? For His Word needs to be in our hearts and coming forth from our mouths for the strength and creative power that comes from our ability to apply it. If we're not confessing it, then don't expect it to manifest. If you're not reading it, don't expect your faith to grow. Because all that stuff comes from the Word of God. Being in the Word is where our Heavenly Father can talk to us through the revelation of His Word in our hearts. To hear from God, we must have Him in our hearts and on our minds all the time. Amen. It can't be just once in a while. You need to be thinking about God and talking to God all the time. All the time. Be thinking about God. You don't know when he's going to come. You don't know where that trumpet's going to sound. You don't want to be left behind. At least I don't want nobody to be left behind. Amen. Some will. Depends on your dedication to the Lord. Now, the Word tells us to rejoice always, to pray without ceasing, and in everything give thanks. Look at a scripture in 1 Thessalonians. Let's look at it. So that you don't think that I'm just saying it. No, it's written in the Word of God. First Thessalonians 5. We'll start at verse 16. Everybody have it? It says, Rejoice always. Rejoice always. That means I've got to be happy all the time. Right? So I can be rejoicing. Right? Pray without ceasing. Wow. I need to be praying all the time. My communication with God can't stop. It needs to always be happening. And then it says, And everything give thanks. For this is the will of God, wow, in Christ Jesus for you. This is what God expects you to do. Do not drench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Test all things. Hold fast to what is good. And abstain from every form of evil. You know, evil is coming up. Halloween. It says what? Abstain from every evil, from every form of evil. Hollywood, 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 I can say. Halloween is evil. So you guys keep away from that. Some churches have stuff that they do to keep people away from uh, doing Halloween crap. But, you know, it's up to you. 
sustain from those things. Now, I want you to understand, when things aren't the way you want them to be, lean on His Word. It's easier to fight against things if you have the Word in your heart. That's when your confidence level is high. Because you're in the Word. Now I'm going to conclude, but I have a few more scriptures that we're going to look at. But abiding in confidence is something we all need when we fight the struggles of everyday life. His Word provides the strength we all need to overcome. Our confidence comes from our ability to use His Word to our advantage when we need it. Knowledge and wisdom is a safeguard that helps us with our everyday walk in every way. Now let's read what Psalms has to say. Go with me to Psalms 119. One of the longest Psalms, and it's probably halfway yes. in your Bible. Just split it in half and you'll be at Psalms. Psalms 119. We're going to look at a couple of verses. I want you to look at them. Look at verse 11. 119, verse 11. It says, Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. That I might not sin against you. That's why I hid it in my heart. Look at verse 50 now. Go up to verse 50. Same chapter. Same Psalm, 119. Verse 50. It says, this is my comfort and my affliction. For your word has given me life. Wow. Your word has given me life. Now, we have the words of life before us. What we do with it is where we will find ourselves in. We find ourselves at. Spend time in the Word and change the things you don't like and become what you want. Because you can do that with the Word. It's a creative force. If you don't want to believe it, that's, that's on you. The future is in our hands. And it starts with these words becoming what we want. Allowing the word to change you and not allowing this world to change you. Let it be God's word that changes you. Or changes your environment. God's word can do that. Now, I'm going to get a couple of scriptures for me in first. Let me say this. If our family is to see the light living in us, it's because His Word is living in us. That's the light they should see. Our willingness to live for Christ and be like Christ. How are people going to see Christ if they don't see it in you? You know, we walk by faith, not by sight. So the only way they're going to see Christ is by your behavior. So I want to be like Him. I want to be like Him. Because Christ lives in me. Let, them, let that be the light that they see shining in you. 
For we were in darkness once, but now the light shines bright in us. That's what they should see. Now go to Ephesians. Now I'm going to read this out of the NLT again. Ephesians 5. But have Ephesians 5, we're going to look at verse 8. Ephesians 5, verse 8. It says, For you were once darkness, but now you are light of the world. Light of the Lord, I'm sorry. Light in the world. Live as children of light. For the fruits of light life consists in all goodness and righteousness and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Having nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose it. Praise God. Now, next week, when we come together, we'll continue on this series of abiding in confidence. So that your confidence grows in the Word of God. And you'll get to understand that it's important to have in your life the Word of God. Because it is life. And, and you can change things in your life through His Word. But if you don't want to believe it, then that's on you. I'm telling you because that's what the Word of God does. It changes you. And I can confess myself that God changed me. I used to be a drinker and a smoker and all that stuff, and I was in the world, and, and I didn't think nothing about I wanted to have God in me, but I didn't act like God's child at all. But once I turned to God, He changed all that stuff for me. So God can change stuff for you. It's just you're willing to want to share time in His Word and be faithful to Him and do what pleases God. Now let's look at one last scripture in the Old Testament. Go with me to 1 John chapter 2. First John chapter two verse twenty eight and twenty nine we're gonna read. First John two. And it says, And now, little children, that's talking to us, abide in him. That when he appears, which he will, we don't know when, but he will, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. Praise God. That's why you need to be confident that when he comes, and he is, that he'll be, okay, that's my child. He's going with me. That's what I want. And I hope that's us what you want. I don't want to be that bond. Because I know what's going to happen. Wrath of, wrath of God is going to come down on those that are stuck that didn't go. We don't know when he's going to come, but I'm going to be ready. And whatever it is I need, I can get it through the Word of God. And that's what he is. That Word of God is a creative power that we have the ability to use. Because why? We all have mouths. All we have to do is confess it and then apply it. So he's given us that ability. The words of life are right. Use them to your advantage, to whatever it is that you want. And know that God will be true to his word. He'll do what his word says there. Praise God. Y'all get some? Next week we'll continue with this abiding in confidence. Praise God.
We thank you. Let's, let's pray and know what we want to speak. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for all that you've done for us, Lord. May you continue to work in us, Lord, that we may be able to use your word more effectively, Lord. Oh, glorious Jesus, you hold the words of life. Lord. Let us apply it in our lives, Lord, that we may receive all that you have for us, Father, Lord, all the precious promises that you have for us, Lord. Oh, glorious Jesus, we love you, and we honor you, Lord, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God.